glow bright. All right, all right. Now, uh, th thank you. Let me say thank you to Dr. Reverend Dr. Aretha Flooker for uh, her kind words and really for this invitation. Uh, and then to these worship leaders, let's give them another hand this morning. What an awesome job uh, that they have performed up to this point. Amen? A amen. Uh, now, uh, let, let me tell you, I am a Baptist preacher. And, and you can look at me and tell, excuse me, from whence I come. So, so in my church, we have what's called call and response. And, and, and I'm going to need your help on this morning. Amen? Amen. A amen. I know you got a line of other preachers, but I'm just a Baptist preacher, so you all help me out. Our, our reading today is uh, for, first honor uh, our, our dean and uh, professors and faculty members, students, and indeed uh, all of you uh, created in the very image of God. Th there's a word found in Habakkuk chapter 3. Habakkuk chapter 3, uh, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, the, the writer uh, penned these words. I, I hear and I tremble within. My lips quiver at the sound. Rottenness enters into my bones and my steps tremble beneath me. I, I wait patiently for the day of calamity to come upon the people who attack us. Though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vines, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. Now, now, now in my congregational context, I, I, I will simply tell you trouble and responsibility. L -l Look at somebody and tell them trouble, come on, trouble and responsibility. Trouble and responsibility. For, for four years, four, four years before the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, and five years prior to the signing of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, a horrible event occurred on the banks of the Mississippi River. In Baton Rouge, the capital city of the state of Louisiana on the campus of Southern University, over a three-day period, March 28th through March 30th, 1960, 16 black college students had enough of the mistreatment of black people across the South. Despite the call to, to calm down from the established black community. Professors at Southern University, civil rights leaders, and local pastors. Those 16 students decided to take a stand against racism by, by staging sit-ins at several lunch counters in Baton Rouge. The, the students were uh, arrested they were tried and they were convicted. But, but, but those students refused to apologize for, for their action of confronting and protesting the, the, the ugliness of hatred, bigotry, and racism. You, you can say amen anytime you want to. All, all 16 students were expelled from Southern University. In addition to the expulsion, the state of Louisiana barred the students from ever 
uh, attending a public school in the entire state of Louisiana. One of the students, Mac Henry Jones, completed undergraduate studies at Texas Southern University. Mac Jones went on to complete graduate studies at the University of Illinois, uh, obtaining a Master's of Arts and a PhD in political science. D Dr. Jones, a, a noted scholar, a, a political scientist, be became the founding president of, of the National Conference of Black Political Scientists. D D Dr. Jones created the PhD program in, in political science at Atlanta University, now Clark Atlanta University. Uh, among Dr. Jones's scholarly work, one article continues to inform the intersection of the sacred and the secular. In, in, in his article, the, the, the responsibility of the black political scientists to the black community, D D Dr. Jones writes, it is our responsibility to reinforce the legitimacy of the liberation struggle here and the struggle of other oppressed people throughout the world and to suggest that viable models for that struggle and to give theoretical tools to those who would be cadres in the movement. In that article written during the latter part of the 20th century, Dr. Jones is focusing on how to overcome oppression, how to address modern day Babylonian captivity. There is no other way to define horrific conditions than as a Babylonian experience. Babylon, as a place, has been destroyed. Babylon is no longer a place. It is now a perspective. It is economical. It is ecclesial. It is environmental. It is sociological. It is theological, it is political. B B Babylon is a perspective. It is the harm we do to other people. B Babylon is, is any time someone with power blocks opportunities and, and progress for the downtrodden. B B B Babylon is the neoliberal policies that cause a widening of the economic gap and other oppressive policies and practices that force the working poor into a seemingly permanent state of poverty. B -b Babylon is the belief in my denominational setting that, that a woman's place is in the kitchen and not in the pulpit. B -b 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 Babylon is the censoring of books and revising the history of America. Babylon is the poor drinking waters in communities of color where other people and where other poor people live. Babylon is the dominance of a Eurocentric worship experience while suppressing the voices of marginalized people. Babylon is the denial of reproductive justice for women. Babylon is the strategic, deliberate attempt to keep black and brown people from voting. Uh, under Babylonian conditions. What, what, what can we, in our diverse faith traditions, do, do to empower vulnerable people here and throughout the world? What, what, what can we do to, to help people struggling under the oppressive hands of the power of evil? Instead of marginalized people coming together to fight every oppressive act, we focus too much on our individual issues. We fail to see the common good. We are so focused on ourselves, who we know, who knows us, where and how we worship, our religious beliefs, that we look down on other people. We look down on other people because they do not have the same standing in life that we supposedly occupy. They did not go to a certain school. They did not earn a certain degree. 
They, they do not hold membership in, in my social club. We, we, we waste too much precious energy on silly, immature stuff, and the oppressor is taking advantage of us. In, in, in fact, when we, when we fail to see the gift of life to create, in the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the beloved community, we are no different than the oppressor. In, in that state, we, we, we are what, what Dr. Jones calls in, in his article a, a cog in the wheel of oppression. In, in other words, we are no different than those that we claim hurt us. The, the, those who, who do things to tear down other people are the clogs that, that, that uh, allows oppression to keep marginalized people in a horrible state. Su such a person is simply a co-conspirator against the people of God. O -o oppression. O -o oppression, then, is just another name for, for modern-day Babylonian captivity. Babylon, the place, is no longer around. Babylon, the perspective, is present, thriving, flourishing, and unfortunately, too many of us high-minded religious folk have become the cog in the wheel of oppression. As a matter of spiritual imagination, the, the, the book of Habakkuk, a, a three-chapter poetic prophecy, it's all about that cog in the wheel of oppression, nicknamed trouble, tiptoeing around as evil. Now, there is, however, some disagreement about the purpose of the book of Habakkuk. There are some, such as the highly regarded prince of the pulpit, the late Reverend Gardner Calvin Taylor, who claims that Habakkuk is about theodicy. Pastor Taylor says that, that the Odyssey justifies the ways of God and, and makes God's doing intelligent and acceptable to people. The, the, the late dean of African-American preachers, uh, according to his obituary in the Washington Post, proclaims that the Odyssey uh, addresses the following question. Well, why does God do this? Well, why, why does God allow this to happen? Well, why does God seem to let evil reign. Why, why does it so often seem to have the upper hand? Then, then Elizabeth Ostermeyer, a, a, a former Bible and homiletics professor at, at Union Theological Seminary in Richmond, states that Habakkuk is not focusing on theodicy. Rather, the emphasis is on human suffering and helplessness before the powers of evil. D D Dr. Ostermeyer, that the prophetic writing is a book about God's desire that, that human beings live together in joy and security and righteousness in community ordered by God's divine will and faithful to God's divine lordship. R -r regardless if this book is about the Odyssey or not, four, four, four contradictory terms leap from the poetic pages that are helpful for us to confront our powers of evil, justice and injustice, confidence and doubt, salvation and judgment, God and humanity. In the middle of the book of Habakkuk, the, the, the prophet gives us seven prophetic words that help us answer three important questions useful for an emancipated religious life. How can we avoid being the tool of the oppressor? How can we stop hurting our sisters and brothers? How can each of us become responsible for creating a beloved community? In, in essence, how do we avoid being the cog in the wheel of oppression? In, in, in answering the questions, we, we rely on what Walter Brueggemann calls prophetic imagination. I imagine a beloved community where those at the bottom of the well 
can flourish in a neoliberal world. To, to, to be sure, we pondered the notion uh, of how can religious folk flip the script on oppressive circumstances of our day. You, you, you are aware that, that, that we are surrounded by the powers of evil, the, the, the cog in the wheel of oppression, such as denying women reproductive freedom, denying the safety net for children to become their better selves, depriving our vulnerable neighbors Medicare and Medicaid, discouraging children in public schools from studying about America's ugly past and promoting white supremacy, de demolishing every safeguard that allows people to live healthy, safe lives, dismantling of voting rights for marginalized people. So how do we, who claim to love our neighbors as ourselves, avoid being a cog in the wheel of oppression? How do we, in other words, avoid becoming a sellout? It is in the middle of the book of Habakkuk where, 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 where you, my sister, you, my brother, cease being a cog in the wheel of oppression. Habakkuk helps us to flip the script. As Habakkuk stands on the watch post, the, the, the prophet flips the script on all the horrors of life, the, the, those woes that, that sometimes cause us to lose confidence and hope in God, the, the, that suffering that, that seemingly shakes the foundation of our mere existence. The, those moments in life that blind us from seeing and believing what God can and will do in our lives. Can, can I be transparent today? I, I realize I, I, I am at, at Bright Divinity School. I, I, I know I am at the Robert Carr Chapel. I, I know this is not First Missionary Baptist Church, but, but, but since we are celebrating Sankofa, can, can I just be my authentic self. Is, is that all right? J J James H. Cone tells us in God of the Oppressed, it, it is difficult to separate our theological reflection from, from our lived experience. The, 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 that is what uh, the, the, the Harlem Renaissance poet, uh, Cla Claude McKay, was getting at in that poem, The, the Negro's Tragedy. What I write is urged out of my blood. Can, can, can I confess this morning? What I profess is out of my blood. I, I come to you from the church of my boyhood experience, the, the, the St. Matthew Baptist Church, Melrose, Louisiana, on the banks of the, the Cane River, a, a rural community, a rural town, a, a rural outpost known for its horrific role in chattel slavery and reconstruction plantation life. D -d During my childhood, St. Matthew held worship services on the second Sunday of each month. W one of the treasured songs we used to sing at the St. Matthew Baptist Church was, I wouldn't have a religion I couldn't feel sometimes. A as a child, we sang that song because we stood on the shoulders of our ancestors who endured more than two centuries of chattel slavery and decades of Jim Crow alienation, exploitation, and discrimination. I wouldn't have a religion. I couldn't feel sometimes. The time has come for, for all hurting people to flip the script and come together. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, the, the, the middle passage, we, we find these seven words, but the righteous live by their faith. L living by our faith uh, is the recipe uh, to transform trouble, which is the cog of the wheel of liberation, into responsibility, the cog in the wheel of liberation. But, but the righteous live by their faith. Th th these seven words are, are code words for all of God's people to become change agents, uh, opposing every barrier, opposition that attempts to hurt God's people. A, a cog in the wheel of liberation is intentional, deliberate, informed, liberative, prophetic, reflexive work that empowers God's people to survive and flourish in life. That is our responsibility. A simple way 
is to close the gap between the critical reflection of the study of black theology, the, the study of our past, and the actual praxis of black church life doing the works to meet the challenges of the 21st century. The, the, the Dale P. Andrews ca calls that divide uh, the, the chasm that, that keeps us from engaging with each other and ultimately impedes the empowerment of a people set up by structural oppression. The, despite the differences and, and divisiveness, there is something each one of us must do. I hear and I tremble within. My, my lips quiver at the sound. R rottenness enter into my bones. And, and my steps tremble beneath me. I wait patiently for the day of calamity to come upon the people who attack us. The, the, the time bright has come. The, the, the time is now. And, and there is an urgent call and response for all of God's people to become a cog in the wheel of liberation. Be becoming the cog in the wheel of liberation it is, in the words of Emmanuel Larton, co community activism, advocacy for, for the poor, the naked, and the imprisoned, and all the mobilization of resources to help the weak. Becoming the cog in the wheel of liberation is to celebrate our past. We, we remember the sacrifices of Mother Fanny Lou Hammer. We remember John Lewis's cracked skull on Bloody Sunday. Becoming the cog in the wheel of liberation is to embrace the hopes and dreams of our children. We, we stand in solidarity with our children as they demand that black lives matter, which is not to say that other li lives do not matter, but validates that we too are created in the image of God. We stand shoulder to shoulder with, with them as they use their voices to create change in the world. When, when we, as God's people, created in the image of God, the Imao day come together against every oppressive act that hinders God's people, we can sing a new song. We, we, we can sing a, a new song. We, 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 we can sing, I wouldn't have a religion I couldn't use sometime when, when we come together. Well, what a day that would be. When we put that song into action as the beloved community, of God, we will stop all the powers of evil from hurting God's people. I wouldn't have a religion I couldn't use sometimes. The, the, the prophet says, though the fig tree does not blossom and no fruit is on the vine, though the produce of the olive fails and the fields yield no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, that gloom and doom in agricultural terms is just a description of the trouble that, that called in the wheel of oppression. When, when, we, when we come together, when, when the righteous live by their faith, then and only then can we eliminate the powers of evil in our community, in our cities, in our states, in the nation, indeed in the world. When, when the righteous live by their faith, we engage in intentional, deliberate justice making in communities deprived of opportunities to flourish as an empowered, liberated people of God. When the righteous live by their faith, we, we will let our little light shine everywhere we are. When the righteous live by their faith, we can imagine true freedom in communities. Then, then we can conquer the other side of, of those obstacles in life and proclaim with total confidence in God. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the God of my salvation. God the Lord is my strength. Trouble. The, the, the cog in the wheel of oppression. R responsibility. The, the, the cog in the wheel of liberation. It, it is time, right? It, it is time for us to come together to fight for the common good. I, I wouldn't have a religion. I couldn't use Sometimes. Somebody ought to repeat that after me. I wouldn't have a religion. I couldn't use sometimes. Come on, help me out one more time. I wouldn't have a religion. This time, say it like you feel it. I wouldn't have a religion. 
I can use sometime. Can, can, can you imagine what is possible when we use our religion? When we use our religion, I wouldn't have a religion I couldn't use sometime. The, the Jew living by their faith, the, the, the Sikh living by their faith, the Hindu living by their faith, the, the Muslim living by their faith, the, the Buddhist living by their faith, the, the Christian living by their faith, all of God's people living by, by their faith in solidarity, but, but the righteous live by their faith. T together, we can ensure that poverty comes to an end. T together, we can ensure that discrimination meets its final death. Together, we can ensure that racism becomes a buried footnote. Together, we can ensure that heterosexism ceases to dominate the political agenda. Together, we can ensure that misogyny evaporates into the smog of never again. Together, we can ensure that liberation emerges as the start and end of every engagement by policymakers. I wouldn't have a religion. I can use sometimes. Liberation is the responsibility for all who claim, but, but the righteous live by their faith. Then and only then can we rejoice as we celebrate Sankofa. Let, 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 let us borrow the, the, the closing lines of Dr. King's sermon at Oberlin College entitled, Remaining Awake through a revolution. The, the, the Dr. King acknowledges the poor grammar of the old Negro slave preacher. But the words are, are relevant for us today. Lord, Lord, we ain't what we ought to be. We ain't what we want to be. We, we ain't what we're going to be. But thank God, we ain't what we was. But thank God, but thank God, but thank God, but thank God, I'm leaving here empowered to use my religion. But thank God, the Lord is our strength. Amen and amen and amen.